the Norwegian flags are flying high and with very good reason. We turn our attention to one of the blue ribboned events of the World Championship. This is the men's 1500 metres. All three Olympic medalists are in this. The field is absolutely loaded. Rosams on the inside, eighth in Tokyo last year. He's got a very quick finish. Watch for him if it gets tactical. The Olympic champion, the world indoor record holder, multiple European champion. This is the title he wants. He was fourth after running 331 in Doha. Jake Whiteman, is this his best chance of a global medal? Fifth in Doha, but he won the Rabat Diamond League in 332. Mohamed Katir, some won't recognise him. He's cut his hair, but his talent remains. Not quite on the form he is this season as last, but he's a canny racer. Abel Kipsang, world indoor bronze, fourth in Tokyo, but the fastest man in the world this year, and that performance came at altitude. He'll fancy this. Tedesse Lemmy, just off the podium in the world indoors. Then to Stuart McSwain, he's done brilliantly to make the final. He's coming back from Covid. Watch for him front running if it's slow at the beginning. Joshua Thompson, national indoor champion. Done brilliantly to get to this final. Ignacio Fontes, European under 23 champion a few years ago. And now to Josh Kerr, a PB for bronze in Tokyo. And he looked really, really good in the heats and the semis. Pin sharp, third fastest in history over the mile indoors. Mario Garcia, European under 23 silver last year. And on the outside, the defending champion. Silver in London two years before that, and silver behind in Gabritsen last year. He hasn't had a perfect season, Chariot, and he had in Doha when he won the title. All three Olympic medalists are in this race, and the champion from Tokyo wants this world title desperately. A big roar as the men's 1500 meter starts. In Gabritsen, usually goes right to the back. He's second from the back because Katir an equally astute tactical racer, is behind him. Stewie McSwain is running in lane three. He often tries to front run, but he can't get to the front. Whiteman's in third, Chariot trying to come round, and so too is McSwain. Can Abel Kipsang upgrade his fourth place finish from Tokyo to a glittering gold here in Eugene? crowd utterly enthralled by this race and they've been brilliant here they haven't just cheered the americans they've cheered excellence wherever they've seen it and excellence is what's on display here you can differentiate between the two kenyans because chariot has that very distinctive forward lead if you get a wide shot and you're trying to work out whether the defending champion is in front there he is in second place mcswain is third Inga Britson is poised with Whiteman trying to stay on his shoulder. Watch for Garcia as well. No move yet from Josh Kerr. He's wearing the shades in that bright blue of Great Britain. He's a very, very good tactical racer. That's why he got the bronze. Now Jakob Inga Britson doing what he so often does. The Olympic champion leads. The fastest man in the world this year, Abel Kipsang, in second. Chariot on his shoulder in third. Whiteman still fifth, Stewie McSwain sixth, and Josh Kerr, the Olympic bronze medalist in the shades, trying to come wide on the outside and paying close attention as they begin to think about the long, long burn-up for home. If you're about to go out, please keep us company for the next two minutes. There is such a mystique and a majesty about 1,500-metre running. If you've ever done the distance, you know it feels like a flat-out sprint. The Olympic champion against the defending world champion. And they are side by side as they come round with 500 metres to go. The crowd are engrossed in this race. The Olympic bronze medalist Kerr is close by. So too Kipsang. Listen to the roar. Listen to the roar at the bell. Jakob Ingebrigtsen striking for the only title missing from his collection. But he's doing this the hard way, you know. 
because they're all queuing up behind him. Whiteman now coming past the shoulder of Chariot, who's the defending champion. Watch for Kipsang, and don't rule out Josh Kerr, he's got the shades. This is a massive opportunity for Jake Whiteman, so often he's missed out, and he's cut up Jakob Ingebrigtsen there, and he's taken the inside line. Chariot closing in on Ingebrigtsen's shoulder. Katia trying to find a way through on the inside. This is a brilliant run by Whiteman. What a story it would be if he took the title. He might hang on here. Ingebrigtsen's trying. He's closing, but he's looked over his shoulder. Jake Whiteman, with the performance of his lifetime, denies the Olympic champion the world crown. So often, so often, Whiteman has missed out just off the podium in Doha, run out of it in Tokyo, and in total, total disbelief, he joins Steve Cram as a world champion. The Briton is in the commentary box, and he'll be stunned. Whiteman's dad is on the PA duties, and he stopped talking. He so richly deserves this, Whiteman. We knew that he was having a good season when he stormed to victory in Rabat, but somehow he has dethroned the Norwegian king and become the champion of the world. Brilliant run by Whiteman. Will it be a brilliant clearance from Mahutika 204? No, there's a first miss. She's on the podium. At the moment, she occupies the silver medal position. But what a run by Jake Whiteman. Inga Britson looked over his shoulder with 15 metres to go because he knew he was beaten, and he cannot believe, he cannot believe that that title isn't his. And I tell you, the moment that cost him, Gail, was when Whiteman legitimately took the inside line. It ever so slightly checked Inga Britson's momentum. He lost a foot or two, and then the doubt began to creep into his mind. Whiteman just produced the race of his life and he's beaten a young man who's on his way to becoming one of the all-time greats but it was not to be Inga Britson's day it was Whiteman's day and he still can't believe what he's just achieved